U.S. Attorney Carmen Ortiz is one of the most powerful people in Massachusetts, the top federal law enforcement official in the state. In 2011, the Boston Globe selected her as Bostonian of the Year. Ortiz was appointed to her post in 2009 and made a name for herself on major cases, getting convictions against Boston Marathon bomber Jahar Sarnayev, Whitey Bulger, and former House Speaker Sal DeMacy. But this Huffington Post article, which appeared in July, painted a picture of a prosecutor who was out of control, citing the recent indictments of two advisors, advisors to Mayor Marty Walsh. Ken Brissett and Tim Sullivan were both charged with trying to pressure a concert organizer into hiring union workers. The article raised other examples of potential overreach, like the case against Aaron Swartz, a computer whiz who wrote a program which prosecutors said would allow him to make academic journals, which usually charge a fee, free for users. Swartz killed himself. Supporters said it was because he potentially faced decades in jail. And last week, Boston Globe columnist Scott Lehigh wrote this piece titled, The U.S. Attorney Goes Way Overboard. What has really st stood out in these reports are the number of high-profile former prosecutors who have gone public questioning Ortiz's judicial judgment like former Mass AG Ma Martha Coakley, who said to the Huffington Post, you'd think the focus would be on those organizations like human trafficking rings, drug smuggling rings, the kind of organizations that in and of themselves represent a threat to safety, public safety. And former Attorney General Tom Riley told Lehigh about the City Hall indictments that there are other options to handle this without branding them as criminals and indicting them. We invited Carmen Ortiz to join us. She declined. Instead, her spokeswoman gave us this statement. While I can't comment on pending cases, I would note that the purpose of an indictment is to notify a defendant of the charges against him not to lay out all the evidence. The evidence in a case normally is not made public until the case goes to trial. I encourage your viewers to keep that in mind when they read about cases in the press and to withhold judgment until all the evidence is known. Here to offer their take on what's going on in the U.S. Attorney's Office, Scott Lehigh from The Globe, and former U.S. Attorney, same job as Carmen Ortiz, Frank McNamara. Frank, good to see you. Scott, nice thanks you so much again. for being here. You focused on the same prosecution, Sullivan and Brissett, for allegedly threatening to deny necessary permits if they didn't hire union labor. Give us the short version of your case, Scott. My feeling is this. Extortion usually means, and I think it means to most people, I do something. I, I say to you, either you do this or you put money in my pocket, I get some material benefit for something. I am sort of selling something illicitly, using my power illicitly. This seems to me not to fall into that category. I, and, and it seems it's not even me, an allegation that well, uh, Sullivan or there's no got allegation that there's any privilege. And I, I actually know Tim Sullivan. I should say I'm not a social friend of his. I'm not even a friend of his. I'm a, he's an acquaintance. I see him professionally me too. sometimes at the State House. I, I think he's a straight shooter. I, I think he's a very honest guy. You mentioned no record, young no kid, 30-something yeah. years so, old. So I, I find this is kind of a dubious thing to be to be categorized as an extortion crime. And I also think that, that to indict rather than, than do a softer remedy is overkill. You proposed the softer remedy in Scott's piece too, Frank McManer. What would you have to say about these prosecutions? Well, first of all, uh, I hope the people who are now criticizing Carmen Ortiz have more information uh, and know her better than they did when they were criticizing me when I was in that space. <laughs> we'll get uh, to you later. Go ahead. And I, I must say, uh, compare, re, ha, I read the Huffington Post article and compared to some of the stuff that was written by me, I thought that was an encomium. But leaving that aside, uh, it's a very complicated question. And attorney, former Attorney General Frank Bellotti in that article was quoted as saying, I never criticize specific prosecutions because I don't know all the facts. And I, it didn't was, stop you, though. Well, it didn't stop... To, I'll let me read to you what you said to Scott. How about a meeting and an agreement not to do this and some restitution? You were not saying that nothing wrong was being done, but there was a remedy short of, what are they facing, yeah. 20 years in jail or some such thing? Per charge, I believe. I thought I said it. shooting a mouse with a cannon. Yes, uh, you a, did say a that. A quote too. worth yeah. anthologizing. Why wouldn't a prosecutor, first-time offenders, I don't think Brissett has a criminal record either. I don't think he has no. an arrest yeah. record of any kind. In light of the fact these guys don't have that, in light of the fact that Scott Lehigh said, no personal gain is even alleged, right. much less... Uh, why wouldn't any prosecutor do what you suggest that Ortiz well, should do? Well, they might. They might. But one would have to consider the context. The U.S. Attorney's Office is the law firm of a variety of federal agencies. There's an, it's an analogous situation to a law firm and its clients. They, they service the FBI, DEA, AT, ATF, the IRS, Postal, etc. You get a lot of pressure from your client agencies to do stuff. But that's not all. The U.S. Attorney's Office has great prosecutors, just to ask them. But many of these guys are 30-something kids, not all of them, but many of them 
are 30-something kids stalked by hubris. They were editors of their law review. They're looking to make a name for themselves. Yeah, but you know what they're not, but, Frank McNamara? They're not the U.S. attorney. Well. My understanding of your former job in Carmen Ortiz is, at the end of the day, she can get pressure from her clients. She can get pressure yes. from those people with hubris, as you say. She She's decides gotta make the whether to prosecute and what. You know, the part of the story that is most amazing to me, and it's not just, it's not just the, the situation with Brissett and Sullivan. I can't think of a time, and you've got a pretty good historical political mind, I can think of plenty of time when people like him and her and other DAs have been criticized by defense lawyers. I can't think of a time when there have been so many former prosecutors who might say something behind the scenes but are willing to go on the record criticizing a fellow prosecutor. Can you? That does seem to be unique. I, I, was, I was surprised, and I'm not going to say you didn't have to press a little bit, but there has been an undercurrent. One of the reasons I wrote this column is I had run into a number of prosecutors who had been much on my mind, and I talked to them. I said, off the record, what do you know, blah, blah, blah. And there seemed to be almost a unanimity of opinion that this was overkill. Uh, and so that's that was at, at, at my opinion sort of solidified on that. That's why I I put it in print, and they were willing to go in a lot of more. Yeah, you, know, you were willing, uh, candid enough. I think that's the appropriate verb to say. You were the subject of some criticism in your time. That's for another day. But were you criticized for by former or current or other prosecutors, people who did jobs like yours or similar well, to yours? Uh, I was crit criticized for just about everything, including cheating at court tennis. But, but by whom? But, <laughs> by whom? But, but, but by very uh, other prosecutors, no. I was not accused by other so prosecutors. Is there a Mostly I was accused by anonymous. Is there a backstory here? Um, I mean, when I read Martha Coakley's uh, quote in the Huffington Post, they said, well, that's one. I'm pretty amazed, actually. She's very careful. She's got the same thing other DAs have. Is they're very, I mean, they play things close to the vest. But then you and Riley and Bilotti less well, so, he sort of played yeah. the middle. It seems to me that there's got to be something else going on here. What I was reacting to is this. There is a dynamic in federal prosecutorial agencies to make mountains out of molehills. Everybody wants to be For in political charge. reasons? Well, or for, for a lot of different reasons. reasons. Uh, part, yes, 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 and many more reasons. Everybody wants the big case. And there is a tendency, there was when I was there thir almost 30 years ago, to make every case the trial of Oliver North, okay, the so crime of the century. Let me ask you about something where she hasn't done something and get your feedback. Sal DeMacy went to prison, sentenced to eight years, but as the Phoenix, and it used to work there in its final editorial, said he was sentenced to eight years, not life. He's got cancer of several kinds. Some people, Debbie DeMacy, his wife has been here, uh, suggest he may be dying. If Carmen Ortiz stood up and supported his petition for compassionate release, most people think that while the final decision would be Judge Mark Wolf's, it would happen. Why haven't we heard that from her? He's been there four years already. I mean, he's suffered a lot. I will say, that was a clearly, no, that was a something went into the pocket case. I, 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 and I think that was a very appropriate prosecution. I wouldn't. So I, do I, I, by the way. Yeah, I mean, but, but I. But not to die in I prison. I do think right. that, that you could make a, a compassionate release or a case to bring him to bring him to prison closer to home. Why isn't she certainly. speaking to that? I would have huge well, my, influence with uh, Mark Wolf. I don't know, but what, so the be, some of the best advice I was given when I entered the U.S. Attorney's Office was this. Justice is giving to each person that which is his due. Plato. And mercy is the relax the relaxation of the requirements of justice. Yeah, but one of the problems and, he and, a, and a prosecutor needs to show justice, but also mercy. And when they don't show justice or mercy, if you're a DA, we can vote you out of office. If you're right. a U.S. attorney, we're stuck with you until the end of a president's term, are we not? Not necessarily. Uh, I was let go. <laughs> oh, that's a very good as point. Bush was coming hey, before in. we go, we only have one minute left. We have a real hard time getting any of the deplorables here. At least people yes. willing to admit they're deplorable. Yes. You're a Trump supporter. My get wife will admit that I'm deplorable. Give me. <laughs> 30 seconds on why Trump is your guy, please. Because we I, know he's not here. I see Donald Trump. If you had asked me a year ago. I'm asking you now. Okay. I would have told you he's a blowhard billionaire with bad hair who why loves you, Eastern European women who are much younger. Why do you support him now? Because I think the political class needs to be bombarded. We need a human wrecking ball. Disruptor. A, to a total disruptor. Donald Trump is a human wrecking ball poised at the political class that needs to be demolished. I'm Simple very proud it. of you for controlling yourself. Scott Lee, <laughs> hi, it's good to <laughs> see you. Thanks for having me. Frank, thanks Scott, so much for your time. You. I know you have a bad hand. It's too. great to see you too, Frank. Thank you.